Hello, I'm going, my name is Ricardo Quesada, and I'm going to talk about the unijoystical. By the way, I, I have a lot of links on this presentation, so the presentation can be, you know, if you go to tinyurl.com, unijoystical, Ami West, you can find it there. So let's start with what is a, a unijoystical. So it's a, it's a board that has a Bluetooth controller uh, that plugs into the joystick ports of the Amiga. And you can use any modern Bluetooth controllers to talk to it. Yeah? For example, from PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, Xbox, Nintendo Switch, Wii, balance board, steering wheels, uh, yeah. oh yeah, iCade. 8 Vito, you know, so they talk to the Bluetooth chip and then you can, you know, control the mouse or the joystick using a modern controller. And what I mentioned about the unijoystick is that as it is an enhanced experience and I'm going to talk about a bit later. What is an enhanced experience? But before I go into all the details about what is a unijoystick, I want to go back in history so you learn how I coined this name, Unijoystical, that people tell me, hey, that's a terrible name. And I do not disagree, but I want to give you some history. So back in 2016, I had two hobbies. One was uni, unicycling, you know, riding unicycles. I was uh, a heavy, I, I was riding the unicycle everywhere. In fact, I didn't have a bike. If I needed to ride somewhere, I was taking my unicycle with me. And the other hobby that I had was retro computing. So I thought, okay, how can I merge these two hobbies together? You know, the unicycle and retro computing. Okay, so I realized that the first things to do is that I needed to create a unicycle game for the Commodore 64. Okay, so that's what I did. I created the Uni Games. You know, the Uni Games is a very simple game for the Commodore 64. It's a two-player game. You can play against another rider, you know, or you can play against the computer. And I released it in 2016. And you know, it's open source. A, a fun fact about the the unicycle, for example. You probably recognize that character is BC from the comic strip. So also there are uh, retro games for that. And that guy is not riding a unicycle. He's riding what's called a BC wheel or the impossible wheel. And that's, actual, that's actually a real thing. So if you search BC wheel or impossible wheel, people are riding that stuff. Anyway, but that's was not enough to merge both hobbies, because creating a unicycle game, okay, you, you can do it playing with the joystick, but what I wanted was to play the uni games using a real unicycle, you know? So I thought, okay, how, what, what, how can I do that? Okay, probably I need to put a sensor on the unicycle, and then a microcontroller that reads the sensor, and then, a, I don't know, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth thing that talks to the Commodore 64, so I need to create a device there. So, okay, that looks kind of complex. So I took a shortcut. Instead of putting a sensor or whatever, I said, okay, let's attach an iPhone under the pedal, put some tape on the pedal, and then I put a Wi-Fi chip on the C64, and that was how I was doing it, you know? And this is a real thing. So it's not like a vaporware. That's a real thing. I invited unicyclist friends to my garage. That's my garage. And we played that game. So there's a video of us playing that game. So you can click there. And you will see two players competing, running the, the playing the uni games. Yeah? So that is why I'm calling this the unijoystical. A very difficult name, but it's a unicycle plus a joystick. Yeah, it's a unijoystical, you know. Anyway. 
I want to give a, a fun story. Actually, uh, Robert invited me to Convex in Las Vegas in 2016, and I went there. So I flew from San Francisco to Las Vegas, and I brought with me a unicycle. I needed to put a unicycle on the bag. So I took the unicycle with the smallest wheel that I had, and you know, the, and you know that the smaller the wheel, the closer the pedals are to the floor. Yeah? So while I was doing the demo, you know, what could go wrong? I attached the phone on the pedal, the wheel was small, and boom, I crashed my phone. And I say, okay, yeah, that's that what happens when you attach a pedal. With tape, you put a pedal under a unicycle. But let's go for, for, fast forward to 2019. And I had some kind of good feedback about, yeah, it's a nice idea to have like a, to control the joysticks wirelessly, you know, that's a good idea. But you know, the idea of using a unicycle as a controller is not so much. So what about, you know, using gamepads instead of a unicycle? So I started to you know, research that. So the first thing was to replace the ESP8266, which is a Wi-Fi microcontroller that only supports Wi-Fi, and that is what I was using on the model on the unicyc on the unijoystical. So on the unijoystical 2, which is the the new version, I replaced that with ESP32, which is a Bluetooth microcontroller. Also supports Wi-Fi, but the important thing is that it supports Bluetooth. And if we compare the two projects, the first one that only supported Wi-Fi and you needed to use a, a unicycle, it was using uh, ESP8266, yeah? But it, but it has four components, you know, like the hardware, the thing that you attach to the Commodore. The firmware was very simple. It was just uh, a Wi-Fi thing that was reading, listening to some TCP port. And then I needed to write like a mobile application for iOS and Android. That was those applications were reading the gyro and sending that information back to the to the to the hardware. And then I needed to create a video game. Actually, of all these three of all these three things, actually creating the video game was kind of the most complex part. And on the unicycle too, the hardware is simple, but the firmware is really complex because I had to do everything from the Bluetooth stack until supporting the different controllers. Important thing, so from now on, this firmware from the UniJoystick 2, I'm calling it Bluepath 32. I'm going to talk more about why it's called Bluepath 32 later. But let's discuss a little bit why it's so complex, the, the firmware. When I started the project in 2019, uh, Spressive, which are the, um, the company that produces the ESP32, released a, a tooling, you know, okay, if you want to create a Bluetooth, yeah, this is the, the SDK they have to use. And they provided uh, an SDK for BLE, you know, for Bluetooth low energy, but for Bluetooth Classic, the SDK was I think almost non-existent. But the problem is that all the game paths that we are using, PlayStation 4, 3, all of, all of those controllers are using Bluetooth Classic, not BLE. So I did some research and I, I either I needed to write everything from scratch or use another stack. So there's a Bluetooth stack called Blue Kitchen. What I like about it is that it supports multiple uh, microcontrollers. But one of the things that it supports is Live USB. That means that I can develop everything on my PC, test everything there, and once it works, test it on the ESP32. But the problem with the, uh, I mentioned that it's complex. And I, what I want to describe is why it's complex. Because there are three important things that I have to do with a, uh, on the on the uni, on the uni joystick on, on the blue path 32 the first is to identify the device the device that is connecting to me what is it's a gamepad a mouse is it like a fridge is it like i don't know uh, uh, there are so many things could try to connect 
Then when you establish a connection, you say, okay, yes, this is the device that I want to connect to. Establish a connection could fail for different reasons. And then once everything is connected, I need to parse the data that the gamepad is sending me and then send back data to the gamepad. For example, identifying the controller, to give you some examples. Uh, this is similar to USB, where you have a vendor ID and a product ID. So all the, all the gamepads, usually they purchase to, I think it's USB IF, something, hey, I'm a vendor, so they assign them a 16-bit number, and they say, this is a vendor. For example, Nintendo is a vendor, Microsoft, Google, Apple, all their, they are vendors. And then the product ID is another 16 number that they use to identify the, the device. But for example, on the Wii mode, the first generation has its own vendor and product ID. But the Wii mode, second generation, the product ID is different. But it's the same as the Wii U controller. So Wii U controller shares the same product ID and vendor ID as the second generation of Wii mode. But you have to identify them with a, with a different thing, with a different technique. Vendor ID and product ID are they are kind of sh shared together. Another way to you know, recognize devices is by their name. For example, I think the DualShock 3 is called PlayStation Wireless or something. So some knockoff some, some knock uh, controllers, they had a type on their name. Instead of having PlayStation 3, I think it says PlayStation or something like that. And, for example, and other controllers, uh, they provide the heat descriptor. The heat descriptor is kind of the schema. They say, hey, uh, if you want to parse my data, you have to use this descriptor. Some controllers, they don't provide the descriptor. So those are, what I'm mentioning is challenges that I had to, to solve. For example, when you establish a connection, so the big vendors usually they work okay, except Microsoft, which I think the firmware on the Xbox controller, my understanding is was at least on on the firmware version three of Xbox controller, they were trying to to identify which ho which host operating system was they were trying to connect to. And based on that, they were sending one or another packet. And that, at least for me, it was very difficult to support Xbox controller. Now they release a new version, which is uh, Xbox version 5, and everything is more standard. PlayStation 4, they had two models. Uh, one that was released in 2013, it breaks if you send a packet before another one. 8 uh, Biro, for example, when they connect and you establish a connection, they will keep sending a, a message saying, hey, I want to connect again. Again, so those are things that happen all the time. So when you build a, a Bluetooth stack, you have to, to, to take that into account. For example, other in interesting things that happens on the devices. The Nintendo Switch, you can dump, for example, the, the ROM. You, there's a command that says, hey, dump your ROM, and then it will dump the, yeah, the firmware. As I mentioned, for example, Xbox has different, three different firmware versions, 3, 4, and 5. And what's interesting is that their hit descriptor is different on each one. So you have to identify, okay, which Xbox firmware version are they using? 8 uh, Vito, for example, they support Rumble, but they, don't, they didn't implement the protocol correctly. So if you send something like, hey, Rumble with this uh, magnitude, it will keep rumbling forever. You cannot turn it off. So those are one of the... Uh, one of the, th I mean, the, all the things that I have to pay attention to, you know. So uh, my goal is to, to have the, the best gamepad support, you know. And in order to do that, it's not that I reverse engineer anything. I'm taking, for example, from 
SDL, I think SDL is being, I don't know if Valve is developing SDL now, but I think Sam Latinga, which I think is the, the author of SDL, works for Valve. That's my understanding. And they have a huge database of vendor ID, product ID, and the model. So I'm reusing the, the database from them. Blue C is the Bluetooth stack used by Linux. And they have some, some interesting features like, uh, hey, if this vendor ID or whatever, I'm assuming this gamepad is being used. The Linux kernel has all the drivers, so I'm using that also as a reference. Uh, Android has all the mappings that sometimes I take a look at the mappings. I did some research on my own. Also, I read uh, documents about how, for example, the Wii mode works or Nintendo Switch works. So I'm gathering information for all dif these different places to have the best possible gamepad support. And usually I go the, the extra mile. I, I, I'm not just, okay, I have a good support. I want to say to have the best possible experience with the gamepad. For example, Wii mode, you know? If you try to, to connect a Wii mode on Android, it won't connect. It, it, it directly won't connect. And this is because Android rewrote the Bluetooth stack. And they are not supporting a special feature that are needed for Wii modes. Because the Wii mode uses as the pin the local Bluetooth address. And Android doesn't support that. And even if you can connect with, uh, let's say, on other devices a Wii mode, most probably it's going to use it on vertical mode. But most probably you want to put it on, on horizontal mode. And also Wii mode, you can attach a nunchak or other devices like a gamepad. And I'm supporting those features. The Wii Balance Board, for example, I'm supporting that. And the Wii Balance Board is great to play games like uh, Decathlon, for example, that you have to, the games that where you have to do left, right, left, right, and you can play it like that. I support iCade. I don't know if you remember, iCade was born kind of like a sort of uh, April Fools, where you could put an iPad and you had buttons there. Well, I support that. No, no, nobody is supporting iCAD anymore. Uh, for example, touchpad on the DualSense and the, I mean, the PlayStation 5 and PlayStation 4 gamepads. I support the touchpad so you can control the mouse from there. Uh, I support a lot of knock, knockoff and clones, rumble, light bar, player LEDs. So although it's I'm the author of this, and so, so it's going to be kind of subjective. I think, for example, that the Amiga has better gamepad support than Android or iOS or Windows or Linux. And I mentioned that I have this kind of enhanced experience that the Unijoystick is bringing like enhanced experience to the, to the Amiga or the Commodore 64, and by that, what I mean first is the ergonomics, you know. Even though I like to use joysticks, because it's kind of, it, it gives you that nostalgic feeling, it's very difficult to use a joystick. I mean, we are grown-ups and we were born using a joystick, so we don't have any problem. But if you give a joystick to a kid, for example, my kids, when they were like six and four years old, they had a lot of problems using a joystick. But a gamepad was much easier. And the other thing is it's wireless. You know, when you have like, let's say your Amiga with a joystick plugged in and you give a joystick to your kid and your kids start to playing like this, you, you kind of are super scared that the Amiga is going to fly away. So also it's safer if you want. The other thing is I support twin stick. And by that I mean that from one gamepad I can control both, both joysticks at the same time. For example, the game Road Declan Zero was released a few months ago. It, it has built-in support for, for Twin Stick. So what I mean by that is like, for example, from this stick I can support Joystick 2, from that other stick I support Joystick 1, and I control both joysticks at the same time. 
Other games that you can use, I don't know if it was released for the Amiga, but it was released for the Atari, is Robotron 2084. That's another great game to play, uh, to use twin stick mode. For example, uh, on some gamepads, like DualSense 5, which is the PlayStation 5, sorry, DualSense, which is from PlayStation 5, or DualShock 4, which is from PlayStation 4, I support the touchpad. So when you connect a controller to the Amiga, you can control the mouse from here, and you can control joystick 2 from here. So you don't need like, oh, I need a Bluetooth mouse or I need a controller. Just from one, you can, you can control both at the same time. For example, the C64 version has Rumble support. And what I mean by that is that I discovered a way to send one bit of information from the C64 to the unijoystical, to the, and the, and, and the unijoystical is using that bit of information to turn on or off the Rumble on the gamepad. So I took Rumble, I decompile it, and I modify Rumble. So when Rumble gets uh, hit, the unijoystical is go I mean, the gamepad is going to Rumble. So I modify two games, Lemons and Rumble. And actually, the people that doesn't know that you have Rumble support and you give it, hey, play Rumble, and they go, they're going to have like a great experience. They're going to say, oh, I didn't know that the Commodore 64 could do that, you know? So I mentioned that only the C64 version had that feature is because I have like a family of devices. Each one is optimized for, I mean, they share like 95% of all the logic, but they're just tiny little bit, they're a little bit different. Especially everything related to the second and third button, they are a little bit different. But I mentioned why it's called Blue Path 32, because I realized that I wrote this stack, you know, that I put so much energy and love on the, on the gamepad support that I realized, hey, I should be able to, you know, provide, you know, or offer this firmware to more people. Uh, so I rewrote everything in a way that is kind of, it's easier to add a new platform. So for example, I am supporting now Arduino and, and Circuit Python using like a, the Airlift module. So actually, there are like teachers that are teaching, you know, robotics, they are using Blue Path 32 to teach kids how to control like a, a vehicle or a drone. So some people are using like a Wiimote with the accelerometer, with the gyro to fly a drone. So and that's super cool. And people are, are bringing, you know, new ideas and sending patches. In any case, if you want to look at, at a detailed version of the architecture, it's there. Um, and yeah, so the project, everything is open source, open hardware, the layout files, the schematic, the firmware, everything is on, uh, on GitHub. You can create your own. Uh, in any case, if you like the project and you don't want to build yourself, I brought with me a, a few devices that if you want, you can purchase them. I am selling there in the back. And here are the links, you know, a link to the talk and link to the Unijoystical 1, link to the Unijoystical 2 where you have the hardware files, the schematic, the firmware, and here are the the games that I modify, for example, that the ones that I have Rumble support. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you. Yeah, I just bought one, by the way. Absolutely fantastic. I bought three, actually. Thank you. So, so I should be able to use that to have a Bluetooth mouse connected all the time and a joystick connected all the time. Boot it up to the Bluetooth mouse controls the 
As long as the as long as the union joystick has power, you know, you can leave it uh, connected. But I don't know if about the battery. So I, most probably the, the gamepad has auto power off. Yeah. So it's going to be good. But otherwise, even though mo the mouse most probably is using uh, Bluetooth low energy and it doesn't consume a lot of energy, if you are not using it, just power it off for the battery consumption of the device, I mean, for the controllers. Yeah, but yeah. But it should just be recognized if it powered the mouse back on, so it should link it up. Yeah, so Bluetooth, how it works is, first, it's going to try to, when you are in pairing mode, it's going to create a bond. And then it's going to store the keys, you know? So once the keys are established, you know, then let's say you disconnect them, then the reconnect is going to be faster. The problem is that sometimes, and this happens not only on the unijoystical, everywhere, like let's say that the host has the bonding keys. And you, whatever, you connected the mouse to another device, and then you try to connect it to the original one, then it's going to say, hey, whatever, the, you know, the bonding keys or whatever. So on the unijoystical, for example, there's a way to delete the, bonding, the bonded keys so it reconnects uh, faster, you know. But, but, but yeah. It's, the, the thing about Bluetooth is that it's not magic. It, my PC has connection issues, so I'm doing my best to solve all the reconnecting, reconnecting issues, and so far everything is working good, but every now and then I say, oh yeah, I have to delete the bonded keys, you know. Yeah, I've never owned a Bluetooth device on anything that connected to anything. So it works reliably on Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yeah. 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 And any other question? Huh? Thank you very much.